So, I'm interviewing a South African woman and I would like her to introduce herself in the way that she wants to, give a little bit of her background, and then I will ask her a follow-up question. Hi, my name is Hannah. I am from South Africa, which is a beautiful, beautiful place that I've loved my whole life. But unfortunately right now, there's a lot of blood being spilt and a lot of lies being told. And I feel that a lot of people need to hear the truth. Because believe you me when I tell you, everything you're hearing is a lie. And I really want to expose that. And that's my heart. I can, I can explain myself no better than my heart. Could you explain to your audience that's watching this video in America exactly what is one of the main crises that you are experiencing and your people are experiencing right now in South Africa? Things that once you put it together, it's a complete monster. It's a monster of a mess. And I think a, a really big problem right now is there are double standards in this country like you cannot believe and at first it doesn't sound that bad the word double standards but then you have to go into the context of what I mean when I say double standards we have a political movement called the BLF who have recently called for the death of white people in South Africa if a white person had to say something like this they'd be in jail the BLF is walking around free as a bird because they know they've become untouchable and once this happens it gives other people who have a lot of fear in their lives and therefore they're very open to lies and, and grasp at any hope that people can give them even if that hope is bloodshed and, and wrong. It gives them the feeling that they are allowed to go to the farms where a lot of people are isolated, white people are isolated, God-fearing people. They'll go to these farms and they will murder them and when I say murder, I don't mean a quick shot to the head or a stab. That would be merciful compared to the things that are happening on those farms. To give you an example, recently, and this is mild compared to the things that happen, a 12-year-old boy was placed in a bathtub with boiling water and they had to separate his skin from his body when they came to clean up the body. And when we talk about these things, when we try to tell the world what's going on here, they tell us that it doesn't really matter because we're white. And there's a very big misconception in the world going on about what it means to be white, not only in the world, but especially in this country. And we need to spread that to the world. We need to talk about farm murders. We need to stop saying that they are simple acts of criminality or crimes of opportunity because they are racially motivated. There's a lot of evidence for that as well. But it's very difficult for us as South Africans to expose that because it gets us into a lot of trouble. We can go to jail, we can get fines, that you, 150,000 rand fines, things that are just completely beyond our lives. And your life is ruined if you if you speak out. I'm taking a risk by just speaking out now. And I, I would encourage people to get in touch with people from South Africa. And believe me, if you just go on social media, type in the words white genocide, and you'll find people are trying to get to people, especially in America. Those are the people that we're trying to reach especially because we feel you guys have the power to help us. Now that is a good point for me to interject. I am over here in South Africa. This is my fifth trip to South Africa, basically Pretoria, Joburg, and Cape Town. I am an American, a black American with an African ancestry. And the same problems that you now see here in South Africa, we are experiencing, and in actuality, we exported these problems to your country not vice versa and for you to have the courage as a white South African woman who understands what's really going on and yet being willing to speak truth to power so that your voice of truth and your voice of reason will call to America those who in America who are pushing this agenda of white privilege of kill the boar of whites don't deserve to live. They are the double standard that are 
pushing this oppression. Back in the day, in America, we had the slavery system we had the Jim Crow system, but it was not black Americans that eliminated the slavery and Jim Crow uh, uh, laws. It was white Americans of good conscience, mostly who were Christians that knew that this was wrong and they used others to put an end to it. Whites and blacks who knew that this thing, this racial mess was wicked and evil. So God is using you. I had no idea about some of the things that you are sharing with me until the Lord put in my heart, bring your video camera and take her voice, let them see who she is and take her voice to America via video. What's your response? I hope that that that's what God really wants. And if that's true, I feel like very very honored because let me tell you getting the news across getting people to listen to you and not see the color of your skin but rather the spirit of your heart yes is almost impossible in this country and it's starting to spread in other countries as well yes there are many people that go overseas many many people who talk to people they even bring photographs which people don't want to look at because they're exceptionally graphic but they they'll they'll say I don't want to look at it and still call you a racist mm -hmm. for trying to show how your people are suffering and I feel that if the world doesn't want to listen if the world doesn't want to hear about what's going on in this country they don't have an excuse because there are so many of us going out there risking our reputations risking our well-being to get this message across and there is now with the internet there's no way that this is hidden correct you can look this up correct you can get in touch with people who have survived these farm attacks mm. and the racism extends far beyond just farm attacks yes we're seeing these kind of attacks almost everywhere but in homes it is reported as simple acts of criminality on farms you have a camp that's reporting it as farm attacks and then you have camps that are reporting it as simple acts of criminality but this is everywhere we have a BE system against a minority group that is insane it's there is absolutely no way that the the how far the BEE -E has progressed in this country it was supposed to end 10 years ago and what is the BEE -E? the BEE -E is um, it's they have a quota system for the amount of black people or colored people or Indian people that have to be able to work at a certain company. What's that? St what does BEE stand for? Uh, black yeah. Economic em Empowerment. Okay. They're in these professions for a long time. We studied really hard to get where they were and were shown the door because of the color of their skin. And as a millennial, it's very confusing to me because I was taught that we we're in a new world and a new South Africa where everything's supposed to be level and equal and fair. And all I'm seeing is the total opposite of what everybody's been hoping for and praying for. And see, you use the term New South Africa, which that term is very popular in the States. And the devil is so subtle with his deceptions Absolutely. that the people who are now the oppressors are saying, yes, this is a quote unquote new, new. South Africa, but it's not the true no. South Africa because murder, envy, covetousness, hatred, resentment, bitterness, all of these things are fueling this so-called new South Africa. So in one sense, yes, it's new, but it's evil. It's a very evil new. It, it's a very evil new. And that's why God chose you, ma'am, to bring this message to America. You mentioned about the farmers who had have a strong spiritual foundation based on prayer. You said something powerfully to me this morning when you said they will gather in fear for each other's lives and say be safe yes. and have prayer meetings for their safety, which I believe God honors those prayers because they're calling out to him in a time of trouble according to Psalms 91. How do we now take that foundation which is correct and take your experience as a South African woman and my experience as a black American man and
and strengthen them in their inner man so that fear goes out of their hearts because it says God has not given them when they pray of spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind so share with me what is the Holy Ghost saying to you that their foundation of prayer which is right can now go to the oh yes Jesus can now go to the next level so that instead of them praying in fear where God says he has not given us spirit of fear that they will pray boldly and saying Lord you are our buckler you are our shield a thousand enemies will fall at our left hand ten thousand at our right side where they will start their prayer meetings off in the morning with their shotguns at their side their dogs outside but in their hearts the spirit of the living God where they say no devil in hell will touch us because we are standing on the solid rock and the angels of the Lord encamp around us and our families and those who believe God for protection give me your thoughts my people are traditionally religion, religious people, but for so many of us, it goes so far beyond just being traditionally Christian. We live off of two things, Afrikaners in this country. We live off of the land that we love because we know that's what God has given us mm -hmm. to look after and to, to honor him through the land. But we also live off of prayer. And I think we do, we are, we are fearful, we are afraid. But I, it is not a, a foolish kind of fear. It's a very realistic fear mm. in the sense that we know that we need to pray. We need to gather in the mornings early and pray. Mm -hmm. We need to end our days with prayer as well. But there is something so far beyond natural in this country mm -hmm. in terms of it being, I use the term loosely, supernatural, mm -hmm. that it's almost palpable. It is almost, you can really feel it in the air the spiritual warfare mm -hmm. because a lot of the people that commit these farm attacks go before the time and i don't know if you're familiar with the term muti muti is a is a, a, sun, a sort of a medicine that the sangomas or the witch doctors mm -hmm. will give them does it look like a little brown core thing like it's different things oh okay yes, okay i've heard i've heard of that yes I, yeah. i've heard of that because i when i was in cape town i stayed in a hotel in central cape town where I could look out my window and see the parliament buildings. Yes. And there was a major street, I think it was called Pal, Pal or something, P-A-L-L -L Street. Pal Street. Yeah. And I would see there was a place where you would catch a railway station, these trains, these orange colored old beaten up railway trains. Which they now set on fire regularly. Yeah. yeah I could, and I would see people laying out blankets and I knew they were witches with all kinds of herbs and stuff on these blankets mm -hmm. as I would walk by and I would even I would even take my little digital camera not this thing here and take pictures of some of this stuff and take it back talk about to, talk about how in the spirit because this is a spiritual battle yes how do you see God using you in the future that you're giving Americans now and your own people the problem but as we end this video what's the solution and how do you see your part yourself playing a role on both sides of the Atlantic I hope to be a catalyst I know that everybody whether it's actual warfare or it's spiritual warfare or it's a battle of the minds God puts everyone in a certain place God gives everybody a certain task and you might be called to be a missionary or you might be called to be a soldier might be called to be both I believe in my case I might be a catalyst because I know that the love I have for, for my people and the disgust I feel at everything that's going on is unshakable and the reason that it's unshakable is because God himself has put it in me I truly do believe that so I hope that I can speak to people and that they might identify not necessarily with the problem that I'm telling about but the spirit that is coming from and that people will, will put pressure on this government because I think that at the moment that's the only way forward to put pressure on the government but also to pray to form a worldwide link of prayer and that let God fight this battle for mm -hmm, us because mm -hmm. we cannot fight this alone correct correct we are the so battle, overwhelmed yes, yes the battle is not ours 
but it's the Lord's yes. that God told Jehoshaphat to, and he said, start the battle, start fighting with worship. Yes. Put the worship leaders out front and the fighters stand and watch God yes. give the victory. And another thing I think is really important, especially for America to know, because South Africa tends to, to um, emulate American yes, culture yes, quite yes, a lot. Yes, yes, yes. The term white privilege we heard from America. Yes. And that's something that's spread here. Yes. And unfortunately, the more South Africans, black South Africans, are hearing terms like white privilege or uh, a certain new, I believe there's now a new definition that the students have given to racism, that fuels the trouble over here. And I think people aren't very mindful of the fact that over here we are in a minority. Yes. White people are a minority. Right. And we have to sort of take up the consequences of the the freedom of speech that people have in America and across across the nations. We take those consequences because over here you don't have freedom of speech. Not if you're white Afrikaner. You mm. you it's they claim that you do, but dare you use that freedom of speech to say something that's true? you face heavy consequences. And it's the same in America. They've come up with literal hate speech. Yes. You know, where they actually say, if you say things, for example, against homosexuality, you can be imprisoned. We've had three or four cases in America of Christian florists, Christian bakers, Christian people who would refuse to participate in nonsense like making cakes with two men on the cake yes. and and glorifying what God calls an abomination yes see uh, it happens over and over again and like you just said my, 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 my sister all of these ideas that have taken root over here in South Africa started in the United States see so you have you are a catalyst you have a great contribution to make and I pray for you as we conclude this video that God will give you according to Ephesians chapter 6 a spirit of boldness mm -hmm. that you will be able to say that the Apostle Paul said to live is Christ and to die is gain that you'll be able to say like you heard the preachers say this morning in lecture fear not man Fear not man, who can kill your body, and after that has no more that he can do. But fear him, who has the power that after he has killed your body, to kill your soul forever in hell. Fear him. That is the antidote for fear. The Bible tells us God has not given us a spirit of satanic fear, but of power, that's boldness love that's God and a sound mind and when we're fearful our minds are not sound when we're fearful we can't walk in love we walk in hatred and fear and trepidation and when we're fearful we know that that source of that fear came from the pits of hell from the devil himself we are planting a seed today because the Bible tells us faith for something without corresponding works is not faith, it's dead. Yes. So this is our seed, sister. This is our seed because we asked God a few days ago, Lord, show us your heart, show us your mind, show us the way. Because you told us, Lord, I am the way, the truth and the life and no one comes to the father but by me lord you also told us if you lack wisdom son if you lack wisdom daughter ask me and i will not i might i will give it to you and i'll give it to you liberally and will not hold it back if you ask without wavering yes. so in both of us on both sides of the pond we thank god in advance for what he and he alone will do with this this modest seed because everything grows from a seed see and the seed the bible says unless a kernel of wheat a seed falls into the ground and dies 
it abides alone. But he says, if it falls into the ground and dies, it'll bear forth much fruit and glorify our Heavenly Father. So I thank you for this time. I would ask you at this time to close us out in prayer. Father, I pray that my words go across the seas, if it is your will. I pray, Father, that you work into the hearts and the minds of everybody that has heard this, that you expose the truth to them as it is. I pray, Father, that you remove their own feelings from all the things that they've heard because you know, Father, that it is a lie. Most of the things that they have heard is completely not factual. I pray, Father, that you make them more mindful of the things that they argue about because the things that they argue about spreads all across the globe, Father, but especially in South Africa, where we are a white Christian minority, it is we are feeling the consequences of the things that they are arguing about. But I also pray, Father, that you protect us here, where we are so scared, such a minority, that you combine us, Father, so that we can unite, that we can unite with all our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. And I pray, Father, that you keep us safe because I know, Father, that in the end it is a battle between you and Lucifer and the rest of us are all just pawns. I pray, Father, that you protect us and that you help us to reach the hearts and the minds of our brothers and sisters all over the world. And I thank you, Father, that you've given me this opportunity. Amen. 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 God bless you, sister.